it's an interesting process. There's not that many, you know, art marketing agencies, for instance, right? Because it's a very, very hard problem to solve. Selling art and photography is not like selling every other item out there. Um, a lot of tradecraft, a lot of nuance to it. In addition to that, I've been running three of these sessions since a little bit before the pandemic. So, you know, you're in a couple of months now. I don't believe that there's another human being on the planet that talks to more artists and photographers on a week in, week out basis. I have now at this point heard it all, seen it all, uh, you know, niche selection, uh, uh, pricing, sales, Facebook ads, branding, how to negotiate with the galleries, pricing, markup. Sh I, I, have, I have heard and been through all of it over the last year. And in addition to that, we have uh, like a little bit over 5,500 customers now. And one of the things that we, we do a great deal of is studying the ones that sell the best and studying quite in depth. Uh, for instance, who's capturing the most emails? How are they doing that? <coughs> Excuse me. Who is the best on Facebook? Who is the best on Instagram? What are they posting? What kind of activity are they getting there? Who is selling the most art period? Who is selling the most classes? Who is selling the most originals? Who's selling the most commissions? Metal prints, canvas prints. And you do all of that collectively. And why, why am I bringing all of this up? I think I can help you. I think, I think today's Q&A after, after I'm done with the presentation can be insanely valuable. I think if you're struggling with something, I probably have a solution that can put you on the path. And I mean that in the biggest non-sales pitch way ever. I don't care if you ever do business with art storefronts, if you ever become a customer, I want the session to be valuable. Um, I wanna try to get you on a path to, to growing your art business to where you want it to be. I honestly believe that I can help you. So the Q&A will happen sort of after the presentation and love for you to think about whatever questions you have, whether you've never sold your art before and you're just trying to get into it, uh, whether you had robust sales pre-pandemic and the pandemic crushed you, um, whether you're struggling with a, a question of knee selection, what style should you be doing, or you're struggling with you know, how to price your work, or you're struggling uh, with how to get attention uh, to your work, which let's be honest, 100% of you guys are struggling with that. Every single solitary artist and photographer is struggling with that. But point being, um, have your questions ready and we'll get into the Q&A after the fact. But I wanna start with sort of this new concept that I've come up with and I call it the art selling pyramid, okay? And I sort of stole it from um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I don't know if you've seen this pyramid, right? But in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, you've got the physiological needs at the bottom, right? And the concept of the pyramid is you have to sort the blocks on the bottom before you can even contemplate sorting the blocks on the top. And the physiological needs are first, right? We have to eat, we have to sleep, we have to do that daily. That has to happen every single solitary day before we can even contemplate working on safety and shelter and money. And then you go up the thing and it's love and belonging and esteem and self-actualization. You can become a great person and all of that jazz. So let me give you the art selling pyramid, okay? Borrowed from Maslow. Same thing, pyramid, got to sort the bottom blocks, up we move. And the bottom block, the first block is attention. And I know, without equivocation, that every single solitary person on this Zoom call has an attention problem. What is attention? It is the eyeballs that you need to be able to sell your work. It is people knowing who you are, seeing your work, uh, interacting with you. And we live in a, you know, in, in, in a world right now where attention is the currency of the land. It's not dollars, it's attention. You have the attention, you can do anything. Without it, um, you're not in the game. D d does the best art that's being created get sold? No. The best art that's being created that gets seen gets sold. And attention is every single solitary one of our problems. And just like in Maslow's Pyramid, you have to sort it daily. You have to be working on getting more of it daily. It is no different than eating and sleeping. And I look at this little pyramid and you know, a, a perfect way for me to explain it. Do you know who some of the most powerful women, not just in the United States are, but in the entire world are? It's the Kardashians. You wanna know why? They have attention, okay? Any one of those women, any of those surgically enhanced women could decide to start painting stick figures tomorrow and sell $35 million worth of art in the first year. Why? Because they have attention, okay? They understood what the, the currency of the land is. When you have the attention, you can do anything. Attention comes in two forms, rented and owned. Rented are YouTube subscribers and Instagram fans and Facebook followers, any social media followers you have on any of those sites. Why is it rented? It's rented because you don't own it. They can change the rules at any time. Still very important, but it's rented. 
the other kind of attention, the owned attention, really, email addresses most importantly. Secondarily, snail mail. Um, and for some people to do text message marketing, it's phone numbers. But you have to work on building your attention day in, day out. It is a quotidian job. And ultimately, it's the biggest problem that every single solitary one of one here have. Some of you think you have a website problem. Some of you think you have a pricing problem. Some of you think you have a problem negotiating with galleries. You can't even have any of those problems until you solve the attention problem. The attention problem is the whole ball game. And when you understand it, you start getting intentional. You start working at it. It is no different than eating and sleeping. What did you do to acquire more attention for your work today? If you're not working on that, then you can't even have any of the other problems. Um, next block, okay, after we solve the attention situation, we're working on it, it's a constant battle, it never ends. The, the outside of this block uh, is number one and two here, and then I'm gonna get into the block. Number one is the business model, okay? I believe that an artist or a photographer, if they want to build a successful business, has to understand the business model. The business model is selling direct, by which I mean you, the artist, the photographer, selling directly to your end customer. You retain the data on your end customer such that you are able to market to that customer in perpetuity. Many, many people, the way that the industry worked traditionally forever it was people that did, did, did not retain this information. They sold through galleries, or maybe they did the show in their circuit, but they weren't the best at keeping up with these people and marketing to them in perpetuity. I got this book that I cite all the time, and it's by Wyland. Uh, he's the, Wyland is the whale guy, okay? Don't worry, I'm gonna send you links to this. Um, but he wrote this book, he sells it directly on his website. He's, he's, depending on who you talk to, he's the number one selling artist in the entire United States, probably even the world, to be honest with you, because of, of his business model and what he's done. And he talks in that book about this concept called a collector list, okay? And for Wyland, the collector list are buyers of his art that sell, or that buy in upwards of seven plus pieces over the course of a lifetime. And he treats this collector list like VIP. They are, his collectors might as well be staying in the Four Seasons. He reaches out, he, he gives them special access to things. He likes their social media posts and he continues to build that list, okay? And fundamentally, it is one of the single solitary most important things any art or photography business can have. Collectors surface, you market to them in perpetuity, your prices continue to go up, they go along for the ride. Some of these people will buy in upwards of 20 and 30 and 40 pieces throughout the course of your life. And if you are not building that list, it's sort of like you're working a job and you're not putting any money away in a retirement account. It's almost like a 401k that just pays every single solitary year. And I can go into some detailed examples, but the goal is you come out with a new series. Uh, you, have a, you have a show, right? Uh, whether it's a photographic series or 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 it's a, a, the series that you painted, you'll start out, and your collector list will maybe buy two percent of the show or five percent of the show. And your goal is just to build that list such that the percentage of the work that they buy goes up and up and up. And I've seen customers that I've worked with recently where forty to fifty percent of the show is bought before anyone even sees it by their collectors, just gone. So you created twenty pieces, ten are gone instantaneously because you have been cultivating a collector list because you understand the business model okay and it is i mean we're going to get into it but it is so fundamental and i've been doing this for a long time now okay i've talked to a lot of people and it breaks my damn heart because on a regular basis people are coming on these calls okay and they're in their late 40s late 50s late 60s late 70s they are at the top of their game they have honed their craft to the greatest it's ever going to be and guess what they didn't understand the business model. And guess what? They didn't keep a collector list. And so guess what? The pandemic hit and all their offline revenue sources, poof, are gone. And they're coming on this call and they're going, Patrick, and this is how I envisioned it. They had the corner office, floor to ceiling windows, the giant executive desk, the big leather chair. And I'm telling them, I'm sorry, you're out of there and you have to go back to the mail room and you're pushing the cart because you did not cultivate this list. Okay, you did not keep a collector list. You did not work on your marketing. You did not understand the business model. What do you have now? You have nothing. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, wait the pandemic out? Like half the galleries are closed. The ones that are still open are renegotiating the split from 50-50 to 60-40 because they have 100 different artists that they wanna pick from. Go back on the show in their circuit. That's wonderful. That does not pay if it's not at 100% attendance. How long is it gonna take for the show and their circuit to get back to 100% attendance? We don't know, but it's not gonna be instantaneous, right? So 
really, really passionate about the business model, really, really passionate about the collector list. I don't, I, th I think the minute you understand that, you're, you're, you, boy, are you in a great place. Boy, are you in a great place. You're building there. It takes time. Okay. That's the outer shell. The inside of the block, three ways to sell art. There are three ways to sell art. Okay. Every single solitary artist, my argument, and photographer needs to understand the three ways to sell art and needs to be applying them in their business. Number one, best way to sell art. Trick question of sorts. Everyone knows the best way to sell art. It's in person, face to face. It always has been, it always will be, okay? In person, face to face is the best way to sell art. Anytime you have the ability to sell art that way, you do that. Problem, we are all of us geographically fixed on this planet. We all have to sleep. We can't have 15 conversations at once. So the third way to sell art, and I say third because it's the least important, is via your website. You absolutely have to have a website. Uh, the website solves for these problems. Uh, when you're asleep, 15 people at a time, and for many of the geographic problems. The second way to sell art, okay, the newest way to sell art, the one the entire art selling world is trying to figure out right now, uh, uh, the greatest advancement in selling art since forever is exactly what we're doing right now. It is selling art via live video in either a one-to-one -one fashion or a one-to-many fashion. A one-to-one -one fashion. I go to Antonio's website. Antonio, these pieces are very interesting. What is that one behind you? I would like to buy it. Can we talk about it? Antonio goes, Patrick, no problem. Let me set up a Zoom call with you. I'll show you a couple of pieces, and we can talk about it. I can get to know you. That is the one-to-one -one fashion. The one-to-many fashion, okay, which is mega interesting as well, is this concept of a live art show, okay? And there's my, let me do it, there we go. So I have a couple examples of this I'm gonna show. Um, this is a painter in his garage studio. He has some works that he's trying to sell. He is streaming this to Instagram. He is streaming this to Facebook. He's streaming it to YouTube. He is holding the works up. He's talking about them. People can leave comments. They can purchase them. This is one particular type of these sales. Uh, this is this is a, a, a customer and a good friend of ours named Matthew Locke. Uh, we've run a number of these different initiatives with him. In addition, okay, to this, this concept of doing it in your studio, what happens if you have an actual show? He had an actual show in the middle of the pandemic. Now, attendance was limited. A uh, bunch of people couldn't travel, so the attendance of the show was light. He still sold a bunch of stuff. The day after the show, what do we do? We turn the cameras on. He grabs a glass of wine. Where's this ridiculous sleeveless shirt? I always make fun of him for the sleeveless shirts. I can't help it. I think it's funny. Um, and what is he doing? He's walking through the show. And you notice people are leaving, leaving comments. We're highlighting the comments. He's walking through the show. He's explaining each of the pieces. Okay? So my point in showing this is this is the new, and I've got another one here too. I can just, I can rattle through some of the examples. This is crazy. But this is absolutely the future of selling art. It is the next best way. And when we contemplate... From let me mute this. And let me but I'll just give you something to stare at while I rant here. You know, if selling art in person, face to face, is the best way to sell art, then okay, everything that we do digitally tries to get as close as possible to that. Okay, and in what would be the ideal way to sell art? Let's just say it's an art gallery that you have that you own in your hometown. Okay, people can come in, they can know you, have a conversation, they can buy the art. For all the people that can't geographically do that. The next best way is this via live video. Again, one-to-one -one or one-to-many, this group show, right? And it's so close to the real thing, it's amazing. You don't have to leave your hometown. They get to know you, they get to interact with you. They feel like they have a bond with the artist. It is the future, full stop. And what's interesting is the entire world is trying to figure this out right now, okay? The entire art selling world is trying to figure it out. Your industry doesn't have a lot of reports. There's two big ones, okay? There is the Art Market 2021 report. They do one of these each year. It's from Art Basel and UBS. I'm gonna send you links to the report. I want you to read it. It's amazing, it's incredible. The, 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 the disclaimer on it is these guys report on the top 1% of the art selling market, right? Like the highest of the high end. The top auction houses in Christie's. The top auction houses and the top art selling dealers and the top galleries and stuff. But the report is still very, very relevant, okay? And, and the link will send you. You can, you can download the entire report, which I recommend you do. I think you'll find it really insightful. Um, but they have these key findings too, which is like this snazzy little web page they built to talk about it. And so I can go in here, I can explore this thing. We've got some lovely little graphs. But you read this report and 
what they call it, and I'll quote, um, chapter five looks at the online art market and the rapid evolution in sales in 2021. The chapter shows how the dealer sector shifted sales online in 2020 and the development of online viewing rooms, OVRs. Do you know what online viewing rooms are? A snooty way to talk about a Zoom call, okay? A snooty way to talk about exactly what we are doing right here, right now. So this is the future of how to sell art in, in, in an incredible, incredible fashion. I, I, I always feel like a bit of a Yahoo to share numbers, but I'm going to share numbers because it's going to give this whole entire thing some teeth, okay? So Matthew Laka, longtime customer, great friend, normally does the full dog and pony gallery shows in the middle. So this was on June 9th, 2020. He did two of these over a 15 period, a 15 day period. He sold 62 pieces for a little bit over $30,000 Canadian. From his basement, no 50-50 split, direct, didn't have to leave. Uh, this is his garage studio, it's where he paints, didn't even, leave his, didn't even leave his living room. This gal, Meg, also a customer, she was moving studios, legitimately moving studios from one studio to another. This was about a month ago that we ran this. And, you know, just to underscore my collector list, okay. This particular sale was teased on a Friday. On Monday, she emailed her collector list her collector list bought 46% of the show. She sold a little bit less than, I think, 76 different pieces for $15,000. Now, the pieces in this particular show were like the color studies, right? They weren't like the full buttoned up pieces. I'm trying to get to one where she's actually holding one. You know, they were color studies. They were sketches. They were smaller works, right? Um, you know, stuff that was just involved in it. But the, the, the point is, this is absolutely the future. It is... It is such an incredible way to sell art and photography. The entire world is trying to figure it out. You know, you get you get people using various different, you know, at the snooty end, it's OVRs, online viewing rooms, or or the art fairs and shows that are trying to keep the booth deposits. What's their line that they love? We're going to have a virtual art show, right? Everyone is trying to figure this out right now. I do not know what floor this particular elevator is going to go to. My guess is it's going to go very, very, very high. What I'm saying is right now, this elevator is on the ground floor and the doors haven't even closed yet. The whole world's trying to figure this out. And there is so much trade craft to it, I can't even begin to tell you. Um, you know, this particular Zoom call, I have all you guys in a Zoom call right now, right? This is also being streamed to two YouTube channels, to a Facebook channel, to Twitter, uh, uh, all at once, all simultaneously. Everyone is trying to figure this out, and it is the most effective way to sell art, period. And so step one is becoming aware of it. Step two is starting to practice it and put it into practice. And I guarantee you there's probably not a single solitary person on this call that is doing it. And, you know, people ask, what is it that you do at Art Storefronts? We teach our customers how to sell art and photography in the most uh, uh, advanced ways possible. And because I don't care... 90% I, I tell people these things 90% of the people will never ever even do it so I don't even care to give away the tradecraft I'll give away the tradecraft right now so my sleeveless associate here Matthew is using wireless Apple AirPods connected to his iPhone which has this stream going out live on Instagram we are leveraging software that is streaming it that's putting in this little this little title here right and his logo and you know the banner at the bottom to inquire and it's pulling the comments in so cell phone ear pods connected to instagram on the phone laptop uh computer facebook personal facebook youtube account all of that goes down all at once simultaneously and you can see there's numbers here if the number two thing goes away he's even got little numbers here why because the people on Instagram can't see the graphics that we have on the screen. And so they need to know, okay, was that number two or number three? You can't really see it, but it's like right behind here. There's like a little thing. Yeah, there it is. See, number five. And we're on number five. So everyone knows. That. There's a million little things like that. What is the best combination of the technology? How do you announce it? What do you do during the course? And don't worry, I'm going to send you guys, excuse me, I'm going to send you these shows after the fact so you can watch them and, and pick up what you like. But this is absolutely the future, you guys, and it is completely changing the game. And you don't need to leave your house and there are no boothies and there's no loading up the car and and driving somewhere and staying in some crappy hotel and eating crappy food and then coping you're going to see an roi there is no limit to the amount that you can run it is the most uh, uh beneficial use highest roi use of an artist or photographer's time uh, uh i could even imagine right now it's not even close and again whole world's trying to figure it out so those are the three ways to sell art i gotta go back to my pyramid
you have to have you have to be running all three and, and you have to be doing all three consistently all year long so we start by constantly gathering attention we start by recognizing the business model collector list as well as the three ways to sell art then we get to the top of the pyramid which is everything else what do i mean everything else you have a brick and mortar gallery that's working out for you that's bringing in revenue to your business fantastic we love revenue i have never met a revenue source i don't like keep it going but it's in addition okay not in lieu of working on attention not in lieu of working on the three ways to sell art and building your own collector list what if it's an online gallery maybe it's Saatchi or Fine Art America or Redbubble or Etsy or any of the others. Is it bringing in revenue? Fantastic. I've never met a revenue source I don't like, but it's in addition to everything else, okay? It's in addition to getting your own attention. It's in addition to the three ways of selling art. So too, if you're doing the show in Thera Circuit, we love the show in Thera Circuit. It's fantastic. I can't wait for it to come back. It is a great way to build attention, uh, but it's in addition to those two. You understand this pyramid, okay? You start working on this pyramid, and you are going to be on the path towards building a successful art or photography business. You don't, and you don't control the rules. You do not control the stakes. You can have the rug ripped out from underneath you at any point in time, which I've seen again and again and again on these calls. And you know, one of the one of the things that no one talks about, okay, and 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 does not get mentioned a month, uh, enough. Three of these a week for a year and a half, okay. It's not hyperbole. That that many of them. Every single solitary week, there are people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and I would say once every two weeks, somebody in their 90s comes in on these calls asking questions. And so why do I bring that up? Understand the perspective of how long you guys are going to be artists and photographers selling your art or photography, okay? You guys don't go through midlife crises. It doesn't happen to creatives. You don't decide all of a sudden you're going to stop being a painter and you're going to go rent jet skis in Florida for the summer and that's going to be your job, okay? So when you have the perspective figured out that you are going to be working at this for the rest of your life in your 90s in many cases, you, it underscores how important it is to understand this pyramid, to start working on this pyramid. And guess what? It's not going to be easy at first if you're just getting started. It's going to be a pain in the butt. You know, I'm looking at Rick there, and Rick, if you have not been building that list the entire time, and I'm telling you, you have to learn how to email market and social media market, and you need to start doing it on a regular basis, that could be frustrating. But it's not frustrating when you got another 25 years of growth in this doggone business. So what does Art Storefronts do at the end of the day? We teach you how to do the pyramid. Yeah, we give you a website. And yeah, we put you into a university where there's no graduates because the learning never stops. That's really... The, in, in a nutshell, who we are, what we do. All right. Thank you guys for indulging me on the pre-played video. Busy, busy Friday here. Um, you know, one of the things, one of the things that I don't, or I, I haven't talked about, and let me just make sure that my whole thing is working. Hank, you're the only one I can see. Can you see video of me or no? We just you're give not in camera, Patrick. No. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold yep. on. Aha. What about now? There you go. Uh huh. See, yep. it's always tech issues. You have to iron them out. Um. Anyway, sorry I wasn't there to greet you guys up front. Busy day. Um. One of the one of the things that I love saying and kicking these things off is, on this call, are a range of artists and photographers spread throughout this country, likely other countries. Uh, you guys have different ages. You have different levels of experience. You have different niches. Uh, you have different advantages that are that are sort of incumbent to your business and what you do, and yet you guys all have one thing in common. Every single solitary person on this call has a marketing problem. Not only do you have a marketing problem, it's the single solitary biggest problem, unless you've never sold your art before, that you have in your business. And being that I talk to hundreds of you guys week in, week out, every single solitary week, I was doing another one of these things earlier and I was talking to a huge group of artists, they all had marketing problems. Until you fix the marketing problem, the business is not going to grow year over year over year. And yet, what do most artists and photographers do? They go and work on everything but the marketing problem. Or if they do work on the marketing problem, it's for a very short period of time, and then they quit, and they don't do it consistently. So I'm happy to get into the Q&A and talk about absolutely anything. I, I would love for it to have a marketing focus and bent to it, but it's Friday. Um, everybody's in a good mood. Weekend is here. We can, we can literally talk about anything. So you guys got questions about art storefronts. We can deal with those. You got questions about what's going on in your business, pricing, niche selection, emailing, Facebook ads. You're doing the show in their circuit, uh, art shows, live art shows, love to get into any and all of them. 
uh, format for questions is as follows. So if you're one of the brave ones like Hank, he's the only one I can see so far that has a camera on. Hank, if you've got a question, all you have to do is raise your hand. I'll know you have a question because I can see it. Everyone else, at the bottom of your Zoom window, there's this like little smiley face looking thing that says reactions. If you click that, there's a raise hand button and that lets me know like, hey, you've got a question um, and then I can unmute you. Uh, bring you in and we can get into just about anything um, so love love to hear uh, what questions you guys might have and I just need one person to be brave to start unless you want to start Hank do you? oh good Hank I appreciate you hold on you have to unmute Hank it's in the bottom left hand corner little click the little mic yep gotcha yeah hi hi Patrick hey so this is a fundamental question mm -hmm. uh, I understand what you're pitching is how to sell how to get someone to sell his art so my question to you is what is art storefronts selling what is it that you are selling and how much does it cost yep good questions um so the easiest way to think about it is we have a website right lots of lots of people have websites out there there's everyone in their brother has a website company um is our website really, really good at selling art and photography? Yes, it is. But do you have a website problem? No, you don't. You have a marketing problem along with every other artist, right? So if you came and you signed up and you just got a website from us, your business would not fundamentally change. Nothing would change. So until you start working consistently on your marketing, uh, you're not going to be driving eyeballs to the page. You're not going to be driving eyeballs to the art, and the business won't grow. So what we essentially do is we teach you to market all year long. We are essentially a graduate university in art and photography business and marketing and so we teach you how to do all of the above year in year out and we never stop um, so that's essentially what the entire offering is and then in terms of pricing uh, and I'll unmute you again you can you can come back on if you have a follow-up in terms of pricing you know w w we charge a normal website monthly fee like all the rest of them do and then we charge a one-time fee that goes to pay for all the people that are going to teach you marketing for the rest of your life what what are what, what is that price range? Uh, the the bottom plane starts at like I think nine hundred and ninety bucks and like forty nine dollars a month. And what do you get for the nine hundred and ninety dollars? You get a, you get a calendar that tells you what to do three hundred and sixty five days a year. You get an entire library of digital education that teaches you how to do all the things the calendar tells you to do. You get multiple Zoom calls a week uh, with members, myself, with members of my marketing team, like this, in which we teach you the various things to do, and then you can raise your hand, say, "I've got a question. I'm stuck on this, or I'm stuck on that." Um, in addition to that, you get pretty much around the clock support. Um, seven days a week. We don't just support you on our application. If you're running into problems on Facebook or you're running into problems on Instagram or you're running into problems on MailChimp, which is what we use to email, um, they can help get you unstuck on all of the above. And it's not like you're doing phone calls and waiting on hold, right? Like you can jump into video chats with people. Uh, in addition to that, we have a private Facebook group in which our members support one another. Uh, and then, you know, m various divisions of our company pour in and get you unstuck and you know buck you up when you're when you're having a tough day and all the rest it's like equal equal measure marketing and equal measure support both of which are critically important and the support is not just technical support either a lot of, a lot of times it ends up being moral support right um yeah that's what i'd say what do you charge for a website it's all included so like the the, the, web, the website fees in there you, you you get a website with us that's essentially pretty much already built. All you have to do is upload your logo, upload your work, price it, label it, title it, write your about me section, and you're done. What, what's the address of that site? I could send you I could send you a list in the, you wanna like see some customer examples? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can, April will put a couple into the chat right here. Are you on your okay. phone? Or, yeah, are you on your phone or computer? Uh, computer. Yeah, so just April will throw a couple links into the chat and you can see them. Um, you know, you'll find, you'll find that they all look very similar and they all look no different than the experience when you walk into an art gallery, which means there's not a bunch of pretty fonts and wacky colors and sliding around nonsense. They all are very minimalist and all white based such that the work is front and center. Okay. Point being is everyone thinks about websites. So they, they start getting in their head, like all the design work they have to do and, you know, making it look pretty and, and wonderful and, the reality is, is that I've looked at so many different artists and photographers' websites, and the amount of goofy nonsense that people put on there is staggering to me, right? Like, all you want is everything else to fade out of the background and the work just to be front and center. What do you do, by the way? Do you paint or do you, are you a photographer? Photographer. And how have you gone about selling up till now? Well, 
I have a website which needs to be redone because it's uh, uh, it's not up to date. Yeah. And um, I sold a few pieces off of that. I belonged to a uh, local gallery, and you know, I, through the years, I've sold a fair number of pieces, mm -hmm. but I'd like to sell more. And I, I'm concentrating now on upgrading my website and looking around for, you know, options there. Yeah, I, I would caution against going your own and upgrading the website if you it, it, and this is not a sales pitch whether you sign up with us or not if if you're not going to solve the marketing problem you got to solve the marketing problem you have to figure out a way to get attention and eyeballs to your photography right and and just a new website's not enough so if you if you were to say forget art storefronts i don't want to do business with those guys i'm just going to you know pay the 1500 or 2000 or 3000 whatever it ends up costing you to upgrade your website after that's done nothing will have changed your website will be up to date but yeah you, you still have to you know, you have to get eyeballs to it, right? That's that's no, and it's necessary, but not sufficient. I understand that. Yeah, Nece idea. About by the, the way, website. fantastic line. I might use that. Nece necessary, <laughs> but not sufficient. <laughs> I won't charge you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's really good. Um, yeah. So I, right now, I I do need to um, upgrade my my website for sure. And I'm looking around. I don't want to do it myself. I'm not that technically uh, proficient. Yeah. And I don't have the time to assume another learning curve in my life. Yeah. Um, I want to have somebody else take what's on my website and reconfigure it into a, um, a, diff a different platform, a new platform. Yeah. And you don't, even have, you, don't even, you don't even have to do it. You don't even have to do it if you don't want to. You can pay. We have, we have teams that yeah. do it for you if you want. Yeah, who would you recommend? Or you, could you send me somebody you'd recommend who could just... Uh... Well, yeah, if you, if, what I'm saying is if you sign up with us, we have like a client services division. And if you're like, hey, I don't even want to build it, you guys build it, you can just pay and have it done. Yeah. How so, would I... That's an option. Is there some way I could know ahead of time what the cost range might be for reconfiguring my website well our team wouldn't touch your existing one right it would be incumbent yeah. upon you signing up but i could i mean just generally speaking what platform is your website on currently uh i just had somebody uh Custom do it, it using his own coding so i've been yeah. looking at wordpress and uh, art span and yeah. um square space but yeah, all of these require learning curves that I'm not going to assume. And I don't want to pay everything is already on my website that I want to include, yeah. including a couple hundred photographs and their proper sequence and portfolios and mm -hmm. some other stuff. Uh, and I just need to have it reconfigured on one of these more current platforms. Yeah, yeah. I think as we do the demo process, which is like it's an hour Zoom call with somebody on our outreach team, and they walk you through all the bells and whistles and pricing and everything else. I would say, as you're as you're doing your due diligence and figuring out what to do, I would I would sit through one of those and get to the bottom of all of it, and you can you can see whether or not we're your speed or not. How do I access that? Um, if you want, we can have somebody contact you and reach out if you're inclined. Sure. One less thing. Yeah. Yep. Um. Okay. Yep. Juan Thank just sent you. me a message. Yeah, my pleasure. And you win the contest. You win the most comfortable looking chair contest for the day, by the way. <laughs> or maybe it's maybe it's just the posture or whatever. But I'm I'm certainly not in that lapse of luxury right now. <laughs> I yeah. Need, I, need, I, need, I think you've probably earned your Barca lounger. Yeah, I think I have too. I need one. I need one. Um. All right. Thank you, Hank. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Um. Okay, Letta, you are up next. Go ahead, Letta. Gotcha. Hi, Patrick. Hey. Have a um, follow up email question. So, suppose I met someone at the art fair who is mm -hmm. interested in my work. Yes. And decided. And so, I next day or same day, I send up an email mm -hmm. saying, Here's the work. Um, nice to meet you. You know, here's the work you were interested in, the, the story, etc. Mm -hmm. And get nothing in response. Right, so understand what I suppose what I'm supposed to do is kind of next in in a few days send another follow up 
and maybe in a week send another follow up if, if I still don't get response. Yeah, and I mean, you, it I could have... it could be all all sorts of things, right? Like you maybe they were just busy and they didn't see it, so you definitely at least have to send a follow up. But also maybe they give you the wrong email address on accident, right? That happens from time to time. So mm -hmm. you you, you kind of just need to, to to see what you can do there. But do you know what I would do is I would just I would send a follow up. And instead of just sending all the work and, and all of that gobbledygook in the email, I would say, you know, if you want to jump on a Zoom call, we could jump on a Zoom call and I can kind of walk you through options and show you a couple of the pieces. If that's something that works for you, let me know. Thanks. Okay. So in the second email, just offer to talk on the Zoom or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, I would. Okay. Because I was wondering, like, I have no idea what to, what else to write, right? So we yeah, just yeah, follow exactly. up and say what. Yeah. And if I get no response, for the offer on zoom then i'd probably just, just it yeah i'd probably plus. just i'd probably just leave it go at that point i mean maybe you can send him one more email in a couple of weeks but you know who, who knows it could be busy it could be could be any anything right um mm -hmm. and and that's how it goes sometimes all right thank you yeah thank you Lena. all right robert ford you're up next go ahead robert uh yes can you hear me okay yeah sure yeah. can good um I'm, I've been listening. I appreciate all uh, what you're saying, what uh, the different steps and so on. Uh, over the years, I'm a photographer, I should say, and over the years, I've primarily sold my art uh, via uh, Getty Images, stock photo companies, things like that, mm -hmm. you know, a certain percentage. Uh, and of course, uh, that whole market has been getting less and less profitable over time. The mailbox uh, money, the mailbox money checks are, are few and far between these days and for lesser and lesser amounts. I know, I know. Right. Yeah. So, so I've been thinking, well, I should really, uh, you know, up my game and try to do more direct marketing like you folks are suggesting and so on. Uh, you know, the, the, the website, I understand I, I need to improve my website. And I, I started looking at a local e-commerce group, mm -hmm. uh, that said that they could make a great website and do stuff for me and mm -hmm. so much a month. But when I started looking at the costs, I've had kind of uh, second thoughts about that. They're talking about $200 a month just to monitor and up yep. the site yep. kind of help much on the marketing. And that's such, non and so that's, that's, that's such nonsense. What really, what to do, what's the most effective thing at this point to do. So, uh, any, yeah. any council i appreciate it yeah, yeah I, that that's that the, the those rates are ridiculous um two hundred dollars for upkeep you don't need it you don't need a single solitary damn dime for upkeep i mean you could you could it, whatever they're whatever they're throwing in there in the charging they're really hammering you now if they're doing a bunch of marketing for you that would be a different deal but you you, you need to, you need to get a demo too where trust me we're the right solution i don't, I don't even need to say there's a sales pitch but if you're if you're willing if you're willing and committed to put a couple of years into consistent marketing, which you've probably never done, mm -hmm. you'll make it. Right. It's, yeah. It's, no, that, I, it's that simple. Yeah. I've, I've sold, uh, uh, oh, I, I usually do several thousand dollars a year, just, uh, you know, uh, just doing it through the uh, iStock and Getty images mm -hmm. and things like that. So mm -hmm. I know that there is a market out there. I've, I've traveled all over the world. So I have a lot of photography from a lot of strange places and, mm -hmm. And stuff, but it's trying to find the market because it's global. It's not just my, I'm not just a local person. Right. Uh, that's kind of been also a question as to how do I tap into that global market? So, yeah, that's, yeah. that's more possible today than ever before too. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's ironic that I have his image behind me, but this guy, this guy was like a, you know, a real eye opening moment for me earlier in the year because you know, everyone talks about having like truly an international business, right? But how few actually do have an international business? Not yeah. that many. It's really, it's really actually pretty damn hard, right? Um, yeah. Both from the the product manufacturing standpoint, and then also to a certain extent the the the, the shipping standpoint, right? But this right. guy, this guy had two shows over the course of um, the pandemic. It was like a year ago, so May twenty second of twenty twenty. And he sold 62 pieces, right? And he's got a decent size Instagram following. I, I have it on one of these pages. I might as well see it. Where is it? I have it. Let me just see. I had, those, I had this like little fancy design thing up here. With. So two shows, 61 pieces, a little bit over 30,000 Canadian, 8,400 Facebook fans, 29,000 Instagram followers, right? The, the, mm -hmm. the YouTube followers are sort of nonsense because he does this. Um, 
he does this like time lapse painting thing that he's really popular for. So, but they're not buying this work; they just like it because it looks cool, right? So, uh -huh. what was what was interesting about this though to me, which was like such an eye opener, is after after he had these shows, okay, he had to ship artwork, and he's in um, Laval in Quebec and Canada. He had to ship multiple pieces to Canada. He had to ship multiple pieces to the U.S. He had to ship like four pieces to Europe, one to Asia. I think two into Mexico and one into Central America. And I just sat there and I looked at that and it's like, that is that is one of the staggering arbitrages of what you guys do as a business. Meaning, mm -hmm. you know, for everyone else, like you have to get like some injection molding made, right? And then you have to order 10,000 of these things. And then you have to put the 10,000 things in, your, in a warehouse somewhere. And then you have to start selling them and then you can figure out how to get them international. Like you guys have the ability to create as much as you can, as much as you like, whether it's with a brush or with the camera and the lens, and then ship it ad infinitum. And you know, when you when you look at the print partners that we run with, so we're we're integrated on one click with Bay Photo and then another company of similar size on the East Coast called Graphic Dimension. The companies mm -hmm. are doing like 30, 40 million dollars a year in printing, right? And you know, mm -hmm. not all from us, but just as businesses. And so the rates that you're getting at FedEx, UPS, and DHL are insane because they are shipping so much. And it's like, you really can have an international business. You really can sell into international markets and you can do it all without leaving your house. That is all totally possible. doesn't mean it's easy. doesn't mean you still have, you still have to fix the marketing problem, but you truly sure. can have an international business. And I don't know of that many products where you can do that. You know, it's not so easy normally. So right. it's, it, it, it's, it, my point is, it's exciting, right? It's like one of the really exciting things about this business. But again, yeah. I'm not trying to blow smoke or sugarcoat it. Fixing the marketing problem is a huge pain in the ass, right? You have to work at it, right? But if mm -hmm. you if you do, if you do, like, you know, the things, I, I, I believe, okay, this industry, on, and especially on your side on the photography, but also, also on the art side, like, I believe we are facing down our, blockbuster netflix moment our uber taxi cab moment right and let me explain it in nuance to your situation like getty was great for you in the day you probably got in very early to it probably got in very early to iStock. you had great resources and then the next thing you know everybody and their brother had a camera everyone started uploading it the margin shrunk down there was 55 different photos of the same photo you had they picked other ones algorithms derated you so that business model is done it's toast i think the gallery model is toast too like you can't build a long-term business that grows year over year over year if you don't know who your customers are and you don't have the ability to market to them in perpetuity, right? So the 50-50 the split and not knowing who the hell is buying your work, that is not sustainable. You can't build a long-term business. And then like I said in my presentation, like every single solitary week I run one of these, there are people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and a couple of months in their 90s coming on to these saying, how can I grow the business? And I look at that and I'm like, oh my gosh, artists, uh, creatives don't, don't hang up their shoes at, at, at the minute the retirement day happens. It's not like you hit 60, you retire and you're like, okay, I'm done. I'm not creating anymore. No, you're creating for the rest of your life. Right. And you right. have, the, you have, the, you, the point is, is there's true income potential for the rest of your life. So it makes even more sense to put in the hard work to actually build the marketing machine. That's going to continue to grow the business year over year. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah. just, just for, for your curiosity, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, not on video, but the picture you're looking at me is standing in front of a, ta a statue in Katanga, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Wow. So, so how do I market to people that I've known? I work with national parks around the world, and mm -hmm. so that's how you got to travel everywhere. And things. So there's so most of my market is probably global, uh, and uh, so so you what you're if I heard you correctly, what you're saying is in terms of of uh, uh, producing the prints and shipping them to wherever it would be, whether it be in Shanxi in China or in Katanga or in Rwanda where I used to work or mm -hmm. Kenya, Central America, that that would be taken care of. I I would work. I need to work on the marketing and then yes, you can solve the shipping yes uh, issue. Hundred yeah. percent. Yep. Sounds great. Well, um, thank you. I really appreciate what you've been saying today. Thank you. Yep. I look forward to, to checking out some of your photographs and you'll, you'll have an interesting task of it too, right? Because all you know is you have this incredible archive, Robert, you don't know which ones are going to resonate once you actually start doing active marketing, right? And you know, you might find you're going all in on one country for some reason, because that's a home run, but you never, you never know these things until you just, you get going on your marketing. Okay. So B source in the chat said, do you folks produce the artwork from the file as well? Yes, we do. Um, so that happens automatically. Um, you're saying who facilitates the Zoom sessions, the artist? 
no, we just schedule regular, we call them regular office hour sessions um, that happen like four days a week that you can pop into. And then a whole bunch of times we'll have topic specific sessions as well. Like I just did one last week on merchandising. In fact, April, will you put that video in the chat? This is, this is, I am more proud of this video that I, that I made uh, last week. I think you guys should all watch it. It's on YouTube. It's an easy watch. It's 20 minutes and it'll get you fired up for Q4 and put some thoughts into your head that are likely not there now um, that I think is really, really important. All right. Jamu is asking about limited edition prints. Yeah, you can do limited edition all day. Um, Jamu, I'm going to unmute you, Jamu. So with POD service, do the prints come numbered proof certificate ownership? Yeah, so a couple of different ways to handle like the limited editions. And, you know, I sort of like, I, I like this, Jamie, I like this strategy of approaching it, but it, it is by no means the only way to approach it, right? Like there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do it. But I like, I like giving my buyers choice, okay? And, you know, he, he's asking specifically, and, and I assume this, Jamie, could confirm this for me. He's asking specifically, what happens with the limited editions? How does he handle the signing portion of the limited editions? Is that is that essentially correct? Uh, exactly, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, like giving, I like giving people options. And I think what you'll find is never outsmart your buyers, right? They're, the limited edition is going to be limited no matter what, right? So if you if, let's just say if you're only doing a 50 of this, you're only doing a 50 of this, right? There's only ever going to be 50. But... Maybe I don't want to pay the highest, highest price. Maybe I want a deal and I don't really care if it's hand signed, right? So what I, what I like to do is I like to offer one price for digital signature or no signature, right? So it's handled automatically and then offer a different price for hand signed. And what happens when you do the hand signed is you order, you, the, the, the print order comes in, the thing gets shipped to your house. They do a wonderful job shipping it. So you just lightly open the box, you, you open the plastic, you peel the piece out, sign it, zip it back up, put it back in the box and ship it to them, but you've charged extra for it, right? And you know, one of the things that I love more than anything else about this industry, Amazon has not ruined it yet, meaning there is not a damn expectation that everything ships for free, which is fantastic, right? Thank God for that. Um, so people understand they're, and, and they're usually open. And then yes, you could put in your own certificate of authenticity. I think we actually have our own certificates of authenticity. And then I think we have a new feature where there's like a limited edition stamp, but yeah. That's, that's, that's sort of how I recommend doing it. Yeah, that, that perfectly answers my question. Thank you. Yeah. But I like where your head's at. I think every, I think everyone should have originals, limited editions and open editions. It's so important to have like a range of prices. Right. And, and Jimmy, you'd be surprised. We have a lot of people that are getting like two, $300, $400 extra for the hand signed ones. And a lot of times, you know, especially if they're metal prints, they'll like, they'll show you. They'll show you how it's going to be signed and then they'll like, you know, they'll write custom messages on the back of them, right? I mean, this is a tiny one, obviously, but so it gives you, gives you, gives you ample opportunity to sort of, to sort of sex them up a little bit, which is cool too. But yeah, I love the limited editions as far as just giving you, giving you a nice price point in between originals and, and open editions, which I think is really important. So that's what I'd say. Um, thanks, Monique. Glad you got the, got the video. What else, guys? Questions? Questions on a Friday? Can we about anything about anything? I've enjoyed the session, but I feel like I got I got to get through some more questions. I've got I've got a quota to hit here. I don't really have a quota to hit, but you know. So if anyone else wants to hammer one out in the chat, you can do that. Everyone's got to watch this merchandising thing. Though I'm telling you, it's really good. I, I I was super fired up on this one. I'm like more proud of this one in terms of a piece of content than I am in most that I've done in a while. How long is this thing? Oh, wrong one. It's 31 minutes. 31 minutes. Definitely watch this. It will definitely make an impact. Um, yeah, so Vsource is asking, how would you start the process? Uh, like I said, the next step is is sort of the demo request. Um, Be I'm just going to unmute you. You've had a bunch of questions, so you should unmute yourself. Vsource. Yes, hi. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, no, I was just curious as to how you would begin um, I have a partnership uh, with uh, my, my husband, so we're both uh, photographers and we share a, uh, a website and we've done some of the stuff that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. We do open shows, uh, you know, the virtual, uh, the virtual shows and we're just looking to 
um, make it a little bit easier because it just seems, you know, as far as uh, the Facebook and the Instagram, it becomes its own full-time job <laughs> as far as getting the stuff out there. No, it is for sure. It is for sure. It does. It does get easier though, and momentum is real. And by the way, I love. I love. You know, I don't know if you saw the presentation at the beginning, but like, what is the currency of the land? Attention, right? With it, you can do anything. I love the husband and wife combo because it's just, you know, instead of two Instagram accounts, you have one Instagram account. Instead of two Facebook accounts, you can have one Facebook account and then one website. And, you know, if one person is doing more marketing one particular month than the other, it, it it's not going to lead to divorce because you guys are married, right? You know, like <laughs> I, 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 everyone always asks me like, hey, you know, um, we're a co-op and we want to all to get together on one website. I was like, are you married? Do you know how hard to make an, one relationship work is? You're trying to do the Mormon thing in terms of a business and you think that's going to work out well, right? When one person is pulling all the weight, like, are you crazy? But for husband and wife, I think it's fantastic. So family in general, I think it's fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Sorry. You're going to be going on a rant there. Um, did I, did I answer all the questions though? Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, again, just uh, knowing how to get the attention and uh, yeah. the handles that we use. And um, uh, my, my husband is very prolific. He's got hundreds and hundreds of, of, of images that he uh, you know, constructs mm -hmm. uh, out of photography. So it's a completely different type of styling. And then we do traditional photography. So what do you, what do you, what do you, um, what do you mean constructs? Like, like Hockney's or like, you know, where you, you layer all of them together and make one image or what are we talking? Um, something like that, but it's, it's almost like a, an artistic improvisation. I mean, back in the nineties, he would just flip the image. So you would have, and, and that is just so much, you know, they've done so much with that, you know, through the years, but, but he then, um, you know, takes parts of the different photos and then builds his own universe, so to speak. Whoa. And, uh, yeah, I totally want to see that side note. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, you you guys should get a demo too. You both of you will need to be on there so that you can you can decide. Okay. Well, thank you. Just the other bells and whistles. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Okay. Mute. There. Okay. She did. But I can't tell if you have your hand up again. So I'm, if I didn't lower your hand, I'm just gonna unmute you again. I don't know if you had a follow up or not, Letta. I think you tried to unmute me, Patrick. I'll get her to unmute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got trigger happy. Oh, I think she probably she Hi. probably she probably lowered. It. Did you have a follow up or it was the same one? Uh no, I have another question. Okay, um, well there we go. So for the for these uh, live stream uh, shows that live you yeah, showed yeah. the, yep. mm -hmm. the sample, um, I've had the, you know how how would how would you suggest uh, to start doing that for someone who is pretty introverted and shy? Like I've um, never done it again. I'm I'm sitting on this thought for like half a year at least. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And so, I don't know how to start and <laughs> jump. So in. let me let me just buck you up on my own personal journey, okay, Letta. Prior mm -hmm. to the pandemic, okay, the amount of times and I've been running the marketing department here for like seven years. Prior to the pandemic, okay, that's how many times you saw me on video. Zero. I was not on video once. I hate video. I have a face for radio, but I was contrarian enough to understand it was the future and I needed to start doing it. So what you need to do is grab this, turn it on, start talking and get over it. There's no, you, you just have to do it. Once you ship the first one, um, once you ship the first one, you get the first one in the water, they'll, do, they'll let it, they'll be this big. Oh, it wasn't that bad. It was actually kind of fun. In fact, you know what? We're doing show and tell, okay? I want you to, I want you to stick with me here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got it here somewhere. All right, let me get this up. Let me get that down. I just want to give everyone a little hoorah. I did my first live show last night and I went really, really great. And I was hesitant at first, but it was fun. It was exciting. One Hesitant at first, Letta. Hesitant at first. We are all hesitant it at first. It was great. And uh, Patrick helped me out tremendously. And I just want to give everyone little encouragement. Uh, if you've been hesitant, just dive in. I was kind of holding back. And for some reason, I was a little hesitant, but I'm really glad I did it. We had that is what you will be saying. That is what you will be saying. Do you know what's so fun too, is like the sheer amount of like technical snafus <laughs> that happen on the first one are crazy. And my favorite is and we've had multiple people do this, Letta. Okay, we've had multiple people do this. 
Instagram, for Instagram, the phone is vert vertical, not horizontal, right? Horizontal is how we're used to watching TV, how we're on Zoom right now, like everything, right? So yeah. we get it in our heads, like maybe that's what I have to do. And so what we had multiple customers do is run the live art show with the phone like this for Instagram. So what the video looks like on Instagram is them like this, talking about their, <laughs> okay? After, after you see a couple of those, you're like, you know what? We all suck at video. It doesn't matter. No one cares. You just get on with it and you start running them, right? It's going to be okay. I mean, I'm, I'm so encouraged. I'm so encouraged. And then also look at this. Leta. I mean, I don't know if I've cycled through this, but, you know, you go through the hundreds of, of artists that we've run these things with. And you know what? You know what you notice? They all look kind of just like us. They're all just normal people in their normal spaces. Many of them don't live in $10 million houses like most of us don't live in $10 million houses. All of them have weird different, why does this have an ad on it? Maybe because it's a large storefront, she should not have an ad. Um, sorry, some people are wearing white gloves, other people are not wearing white gloves. Like, you know, people are nervous, you know, some are in small apartments. Like, you know, it, it, it just doesn't matter. We all just, we all just do it and get on with it because you have to be contrarian about it. And it's, it is the future of marketing in this space right now. I have never seen, you know, be, being, being, being an aged veteran of this particular industry. I've just never seen results like this. I mean, look at Tony here. He's in his garage. He's got a garage like everyone else has a garage, but you get to see this little window into his personality. Like this guy's a surf photographer. Well, he's got the garage to back that up, right? He's got multiple surf, surfboards on the wall and he's got all his skateboards racked up. Um, so it's just, it's just a really, really cool window into who you are, into what you do. Oh, and there was Rob that the guy showed earlier. He had, he had a great show. This guy's like a rock photographer and he totally looks the part at all times. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say. So like, a little bit of logistics and, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of plan in my head would be easier. So mm -hmm. logistically, do you suggest like live stream on Instagram or Facebook or doesn't whatever, really whatever, don't overthink it. Whatever one, whatever you, uh, one you have the highest follower account on, just go there. I have, yeah. Okay. I have well on Facebook. It's mostly my friends. So which are not customers generally speaking. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Um, doesn't matter. So, doesn't matter. Uh, another, another question. So do people just talk about the latest artwork? And what happened with it or? Yeah, I think, I, mean, I, I think, I think you should have a sale for the first one, but we're going to send you afterwards. I'm going to send you a couple of examples. I think you should just watch those for moral support and then see where it goes. You know, you okay. can, you can just look at a couple of the examples and then do your version. Just don't overthink it. Turn the thing on and go. All right. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. And, you know, it, I, I love that you're bringing it up now too, Letta, cause I, I'm just telling you, you guys like, uh, uh, you know, whether you ever decide to become a customer here or not, understand we are approaching the most wonderful time of the year. And it's this way every single solitary year. And it, it, it doesn't have anything to do with us. Obviously we can help you, but you know, we track the sales of all of our artists and photographers combined on the platform to keep the mass really simple. Let's say in June, July and August, Everyone on our platform, the average was $100,000 uh, a year, everyone combined, right? So what happens in October, the 100,000 goes to 200,000. What happens in November, the 100,000 goes to 300,000. And then what happens in December, the 100,000 goes, it, is at 150,000, so it goes down a little bit. That's just happening because it's this time of the year. Now these folks, what are they doing that you're not doing? One, their art is up on a website, yes. Some of you already have that solved. Two. They're actually doing some marketing and actually running some sales. And let's be honest with you, none of you guys are doing that. I already know, I already look at all your websites, I'm on all your email lists, I look at your socials, okay? So all you have to do is figure out how to get yourself into a position. Uh, run at your first art show, Letta, and run more of them around the Black Friday, Cyber Monday. There is no better time to sell art all year. So if there was ever a time to be a fisherman right? And let's just say you were a fisherman instead of an artist. This is the time where all the fish are the closest to shore and the easiest to catch. So do not let another Q4 come and go without, without giving it a shot. I mean, this is just the best time of year. So, and if you sign up, we have a crazy sale going on, I think till the end of the month. So you can, you can, you can ask about that. And B-Sores, I forgot to ask you what your last name is. It feels weird calling you B-Sores, but how long should these Facebook shows last? There's, there's no magical length. There's literally no magical length. It could be... <coughs> 
a 24 hour flash sale on metal prints, right? And you could have three or four and you could show the three or four and talk about them, talk about your inspiration and that could be it, right? Fun fact about this piece, I don't know how much I can zoom in. This is the Italian town of Hosiotano. If you look closely at these houses, they're never allowed to change their color. They can paint their house any color they like as long as it's a color that it already is because Positano doesn't want its little hillside to lose its charm, right? Okay, I normally charge $3.95, uh, but because I'm having a flash sale, you can get it in the next 24 hours for $250. Just send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook, hit my website, right? It can be that simple. The point is, there's no magical formula right now. Long ones, short ones, in-between ones. Um, and I eat my own dog food too, for the record. I do this like five to six days a week. Stream, 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 because I keep getting better and I keep playing with Link and I keep figuring it out uh, along with everyone else. So that's the ball game. That is the ball game. But what else? Do we leave it there? It's a good session today. I enjoyed it. Good session for a Friday. Um, otherwise, if you have a question, well, afterwards, at, as we're seeing if there's any last questions, afterwards, um, some period afterwards, we'll send you an email with all the links and the videos and you know that w that we mentioned in the show and I mentioned in the presentation, so you can check those things out and peruse them on on your own time. Um, for everyone, we said we would reach out. We'll be reaching out. Um, B source, you got to tell me what your first name is too, by the way, so I don't have to call you B source. It's okay, Barbara. it's either Barbara or Bobby. Um, uh, as far it. as Facebook. Uh, things, how long should they last? Should it be like 10 minutes, 30 minutes? What yeah, there's no, out? there's, there's no, until you've run a hundred of them, there's no magic length. I see. Yeah. I see. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And, and if you sign up, we'll be teaching you in depth how to, how to, how, how to do them, how to approach them, how to contemplate them. I mean, you could do husband and wife ones too, which would be totally fun. You, you know, switch off halfway through camera operator to presenter, presenter to camera operator. I love that. Love that conceptually. Um, yeah, they're so fun, you guys. I, I just, I've never even ever seen results like I've seen on these things. I'll, I'll, I'll show this and I'll show this because I'm going to show, um, April, will you make sure that they get, um, they get Carol's, Carol's show. So especially for photographers on here, I want you guys to see this because, so did I show this earlier? I can't even remember. I've done so many of these things. So backstory on this and this the backstory is important because the story here is, 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 what I'm telling you is story is crazy powerful, okay? This is Carol. She lives in northern Colorado. M most people don't know this, but there are actually still wild horses in the United States that roam the western part of the United States. And the ranchers and the farmers are none too pleased about this fact, right? Because the horses eat their crops, presumably, or break their fences or do whatever they do. So there's this battle between those that are trying to save the horses and the federal government that are that are at the behest of the ranchers contemplating culling the animals okay and so this this is has people up in arms like i can't even begin to tell you and so it's my point in telling you this it's a hot button issue number one okay number two here's a woman that loves these horses dearly okay number three here's a woman that articulates how much she loves these stories and all of a sudden each one of these photographs goes from a photograph to this beautiful thing that's on the wall to a story about a real animal um, with a real narrative that's incredibly powerful, okay? Um, the results that she has been getting with live art shows, and I am not kidding when I say this, this is not normal. This is what we do at Art Storefronts. We figure out things like this that work, and then we shout it from the, from the hilltops, okay? First sale, this was March 24th, okay, of this year. Not a, not a great result, not a bad result either. Six pieces, 1,800 bucks, average order, AOV's average order value. She sold $303, or $303 per piece was the average order value, $1,800. Next show, three months later, June 21st. She sold 49 pieces at an AOV of $136, so $6,688. The video I'm gonna send you, she did $27,000. This was on 10-7, two weeks ago. $27,000, 119 pieces, right? absolutely amazing result now there were some circumstances hot button issue and she 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 ran this with the charity but you can watch this one just the story is so good the story is so good and look she's a she's not an actor she's a real real person like anyone else like any of the rest of us are right but just a phenomenal result a result that is not normal okay not a normal result link in the chat so you, you maybe if you, whoever has time watch that after we're done and just the power in which in which she's able to tell a story is just amazing, phenomenal. All right, where do we go from here? Is there any other questions? I can't tell. I think that was it. I think I covered them all. 
Um, thanks for hanging out on a Friday, guys. Appreciate you guys, especially the ones that stayed all the way to the end. I hope I had your attention. Um, I got one. I got one comment, and I might as well address this because I do. I I am concerned about this. Okay, in life and pieces, are there shipping delays? You know, I live in Southern California, right? And in five minutes, I mean, where I was exercising this morning, I could see it. I can see the hundred container ships that are that are anchored. You know, the the port of Long Beach is just just two towns up, and so they're all like spread throughout like my ocean view. You know, not from my house, I have to go a few minutes, but anyway. I'm concerned that there is going to be an infrastructure crisis in this country in the coming months. I think we are, you know, when I say infrastructure, it's going to affect everything, right? Like shipping is going to be massively delayed. But I'm also worried about raw materials. And while you guys are in a good business in the sense that the re the majority of the reproduction is not something that has to come from China or overseas for that matter, right? Like all of those, all of those printers are here domestically U.S. based. The problem is, is all of their raw materials do come from overseas, right? Like a lot of the canvas and the paper and the framing stuff and the hooks and all the rest of that does come from China. So I am worried about increased shipping times as we get closer to Christmas. I am worried about printers running out of inventory uh, as we get closer to Christmas. So I think that's what you were asking about life in pieces, but it, it, you know, you'll see in that merchandising video, like I am urging everyone to pick up a little bit of extra inventory if they're gonna be out marketing and having sales and do it now, do it right away. Because I do think, you know, I do think it's where it, it just doesn't look good. It just make it just makes sense, right? It just makes sense to to have a couple extra pieces on inventory so you can sell some more. The good news in all of it, though, is it's going to affect absolutely everyone if it happens. And the point is, is that you know you're not going to be the one hearing an earful from your potential customer or client that you know you're the Christmas gift didn't get there till February because there's nothing under the tree because nothing did. So. Yeah, we're, we're, we're watching that situation really, really closely, and you sort of need to, it's like one of the things that we teach, you sort of need to adjust everything based on whatever that date is going to be, right? Like, you know, if normally all orders have to be in, let's just say, to keep the math simple, by December 1st to arrive by Christmas, it's not that, but let's just say it is that, like, we might have to move back to November 15th, and if we move back to November 15th, guess when the huge sale is going to be? Just in time to ship for Christmas, right? So you take the lemons, you make lemonade. Um, great session today, guys. Appreciate y'all. Um, great questions and hope everyone has an absolutely wonderful weekend and, uh, we'll be sending you an email in a little bit and, uh, look forward to seeing some of you guys on the inside and